solar power coming into the battery as well as the DC power going out to the DC lights that I have hooked up right now. See it matches what is on the screen here. Hey there guys, this is gonna be part six of the DIY truck camper project. And in this video, I'm gonna to try to cover all things related to power when it comes to this camper. Uh, everything from the 12 volt wiring to the Blue Eddy power station, which you saw me introduce in the last video, uh, to the compartment lights, uh, switch banks, and a, a few other little odds and ends, not necessarily related to power, but modifications nonetheless. And uh, oh yes, also I have installed a solar panel on the top of the camper, so you'll be able to see uh, my whole power system getting charged by solar. And uh, before I get started on this, I wanna give a big thank you to Blue Eddy, because as I mentioned in the last video, they sent me this power station uh, and have sponsored this section of the truck camper build. So thank you to them. I will include links down below if you wanna check out uh, this power station or any of their other offerings. So without further ado, and uh, hopefully I don't get uh, rained out in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, we will get started. Well, I guess the most logical starting point for this video is the power source for this camper. And if you saw the last video where I built these interior cabinets, you will remember that the power source is located in this rear access door. It is a Blue Eddy AC180 power station and it is currently powering an interior compartment light as well as these two ceiling lights on the interior of the main body of the camper and i think the first thing i will cover is just how i ran my 12 volt wiring and set up my fuse block that you see there on the opposite wall and then i will get into how i set up the lights in the compartments as well as the switches and also this little thing right here, which believe it or not is a switch bank. The switches are just located on the inside of the panel so I can access them from the inside of the camper, but also from the outside. And then after that, I will just start loading up some tools and lights so you can see how the power is flowing uh, through the power station, how it can be monitored. And then I will put, uh, pull this out so I can get it in the sun and you see that switch right over there. That is just a uh, cutoff switch for the solar power input from the roof. And we'll see the uh, input of the solar coming in. And uh, that's pretty much it. So here's a closer look of how I've wired the 12 volt components of the camper to the 12 volt output of the power station. Starting with this 12 volt plug and cable assembly, the DC power comes from the power station through this cable and is directed down here. And the positive side of the cable is then directed up to this fuse block, which then directs power to all of the components or lights of the camper. And then on the negative side or the ground side, it is ground directly into the camper frame. And all of the lights and other components are also ground locally to where they're at. So the camper frame actually acts as completing the circuit. Some people hate this, but I found it to be reliable as long as you have a secure connection and you use a little bit of grease to make sure that your ground contact points never corrode over. And then uh, with regard to the fuse block, uh, each one of these distribution lines has a corresponding fuse. So if there's any overload of power in any direction, these fuses will burn up before any uh, surge goes out to the lights or whatever other component and it uh, partially acts as a safeguard for your assembly. And uh, then as far as uh, my little aluminum protectors, I just used uh, various aluminum and uh, flexi line to protect the cables uh, whenever they're in a, com a compartment where something could bump or uh, you know uh, rub the insulation off of the lines. Uh, so anyway, I just did it more to give it a clean look, but also to protect the lines. And just one more thing I need to do before we test out this solar, I need to pop the roof 
and because I haven't installed any struts yet, just using a good old milk crate. Starting from the top of the camper, you will see I have installed a 200 watt solar panel on the flip up portion of the camper roof. And the reason for that is so that I can be able to orient this for maximum solar exposure depending on where I'm at. I can simply just reposition the truck. And from the solar panel, I have guided the wires down into what is sometimes referred to as a roof entry gland. Uh, it's just a weatherproof housing. And then from there, the uh, wires are directed into the lower cabinet where they ultimately meet up with the Blue Eddy AC180. And that's what we'll take a look at now. And moving on back to the Blue Eddy, we will see what kind of power we have coming from the solar panel. Looks to be 135 watts currently, which it's about 10 a.m. So I would imagine closer to midday, maybe uh, noon or one, it's going to be closer to the 200 watt rating, uh, which should serve my needs rather well. But even if I needed to add more solar, I think this unit can take up to 500 watts of total input. Uh, but I'd probably have a hard time actually fitting that on this tiny little camper. Uh, but anyway, I think that'll serve my needs well and if for whatever reason I did need to charge it with the wall outlet or the car charger uh, It charges incredibly fast. I think it'll go 0 to 80 percent in 45 minutes and 0 to 100 percent in an hour um, But uh, yeah, so uh, you can see the input is coming in right there and uh, one of the things I didn't mention when I was talking about the 12 volt is the reason I wanted to do all the 12 volt uh, appliances other than just being uh, more simple to wire is that it would still allow me to have all of the AC outlets available uh, for when I'm doing an offsite job and I need to plug a lot of things in because this power station has superior load capabilities in that it can run a ton of tools all at once, um, 1800 watts of continuous power uh, but there is a cool feature that allows it uh, to go into what it's called a power lifting mode, meaning uh, for high draw appliances like some of my saws or like an electric kettle, uh, it can be boost up to 200 and or 2,700 watts uh, for short durations. So it can really power pretty much anything. And then it's also got an eco mode, so it can go into standby to conserve power and on and off on its own. Uh, so for camping trips or, like I said, off-site jobs, I think it's going to serve me rather well. So I think what I'll do now is I'll show you how I can monitor this via the app. And then I will test it out maybe in a nighttime situation so you can see all the lights and tools running. And here's a quick look at the app that you can pair this power station with. Let's see if I can get it to focus. You can see it displays the solar power coming into the battery as well as the DC power going out to the DC lights that I have hooked up right now. And you'll see it matches what is on the screen here. And another cool thing is uh, aside from being able to monitor your station from inside a car or a house, I can also turn off the DC or AC power with the app. So you'll see that is off now and I'll turn it back on. And now it is on. And this ought to be a little bit better daytime view of what these compartment lights look like on this side since this is a little bit of an unusual cabinet. We turn on the switch and you can see I've got a light down here that shines into both compartments and one up there and I have just staggered these to where a little light goes in there, a little light goes in there. At nighttime it is uh, quite a bit brighter um, and then I just have them friction fit in here and I will eventually put some tape on there to keep them in. Um, but I just wanted to be able to show you what they look like from there. There's also a switch on the lights. 
but I prefer having this uh, custom switch that I made. And here's a quick look at the compartment light setup on this side. A little bit different than the other side, but I have the switch in the same location. And I just have a single light at the top of the cabinet because it's just a big opening and uh, much easier to do it that way. And here is what one of those switches looks like. I just don't have the on off label on those, but it's pretty simple. It's essentially just a throw switch. So on the back side, you have your power coming in versus your power going out to the appliance or light. And when the switch is thrown, it either connects power or disconnects power. Simple as that. In addition to the compartment lights, you probably also noticed that I installed support struts for the compartment doors, which definitely make them much more user friendly. I think I used 10 to 12 pound struts for these doors and the installation was, as you would expect, not too difficult. But one thing I do want to point out is that uh, I got these compartment doors off of eBay. They were RV manufacturer rejects. Uh, overall, they're still in really good shape. They have aluminum exteriors. But the one issue with these doors is that they're not really designed to install a strut because it's aluminum exterior and then the in interior is a foam core. Uh, so it's like a plastic material on the very in interior. So there's really nothing to mount to. So I added some aluminum with some adhesive, some rivets, some screws to basically give me a solid surface in which the strut can push against. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to point that out in case you buy some cheapy doors like I did and you want to install struts, you may have to kind of add a new surface for them to work properly. And the last two additions that I've made to the camper that I wanted to cover in this video have to do with the safety and security of the power station when it is in this rear compartment for travel and also to prevent it from getting stolen. Uh, so as far as the safety during travel, like on a rough back road, you might notice I have some eyelets and bungee cords that feed from the top of the cabinet through the handles of the Blue Eddy into another uh, eyelet. And that is just to keep this from temple, uh, potentially flipping over or sliding around and getting damaged. And then for the security aspect uh, to at least prevent or make it a little bit more difficult for somebody to steal this, I have a little drop down bar that comes from the top portion of the cabinet. It locks up there with a, a screw and a, a aluminum plate. And it is just something that is going to make it a little bit more difficult uh, for somebody to try to get this out. Yes, I know a criminal could cut through this. They can, <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way, but at least this will make it a little bit uh, more difficult and louder. And uh, potentially maybe if I'm in a store and I see it happening, I can, uh, you know, come and uh, do what needs to be done, so to speak. And here's something I wanted to show in the last video, but I just never got around to it. Using the AC-180 in a, an emergency situation, like you lost power and you need to keep a chest freezer running. Well, that alarm in the background, that is because I have it unplugged. And I will just go ahead and plug it in here. You can see it powers it on. It's only using 24 watts of power right now until the compressor kicks on but that is where this comes in handy because it has that power lifting mode. So even high draw appliances uh, that need just a short duration cycle, it can boost up to that level and keep it running. And the last test this power station is gonna have to pass before this thing's officially camping or job ready is to power one of these electric kettles for tea or coffee on the road. Uh, these are actually rather high draw devices I've got it filled up to about there or so, so we can have three or four cups of coffee and we'll see what it's drawing right now. All right, 1400 watts, pretty high draw, 83%. And we'll see what it goes down to when it's uh, done boiling. Oh. 
Seems like it's getting pretty close. I can hear the water boiling and it just popped. So we'll see what the power went down to on the power station. 80%. So that took about 3% of the power, which is actually pretty dang good. And water ready for tea or coffee. My beautiful view. Alright guys, well I think that is going to do it for this edition of the DIY Truck Camper Project. I believe firmly that this is going to go down as quite literally the most powerful part in the entire series, pun intended. Uh, but uh, hopefully it was interesting and uh, perhaps it gave you some ideas in case you want to do something similar. And then uh, also I wanted to mention the Blue Eddy Power Station again. Uh, given the uh, crazy times we find ourselves living in, uh, I think it is nice to have something like this on hand, whether you're using it for a truck camper project like this, or if you want it on hand to potentially power a fridge or freezer or something like that in emergencies, I will include a link down below so you can check out Blue Eddy's offerings and any uh, uh, new promotions that they are having and as for what is to come next in this DIY truck camper project that is most assuredly going to be finally addressing the sleeping aspect of this camper uh, building the flip out or fold out bed assembly um, adding some rainproof ventilation uh, so I can have nice pass through air because obviously if it's raining I'm not going to be using those windows that I have put on an angle, although I do love the way they look like that. They're just not going to be something you're going to open while it is raining. Uh, so I'll be adding the ventilation for that. Um, I'm also going to be addressing a very common question a lot of you guys have asked about. What if somebody closes this tailgate when I'm inside? Well, initially right now I can simply reach through that window, move the lever on the tailgate and open it and it's not a big deal or I could simply kick out one of those windows or the pop up roof I can just open it and crawl out uh, but I don't like the idea of somebody closing the tailgate so I'll probably devise some sort of slide out lock that kind of prevents it from being able to be closed uh, but then again if somebody's that nefarious going through that much trouble to <laughs> lock me in I don't know they're, they're in for a world of hurt uh, but as for uh, these are in addition to the sleeping thing um, the other thing that I intended to do this time that I didn't is I do plan on adding like a uh, fantastic fan or a max fan on top of this which will get wired into the same 12 volt uh, blue eddy power that everything else is being powered by uh, but I just didn't get around to uh, ordering it and uh, anyway so that also will be something that will be added later on and then after that, I will finally address the pop-up or the flip-up top. I'm going to have, I'm thinking I'm going to have some fabric sides that either uh, retract inside uh, to provide uh, weatherproof uh, sealant if it's raining and the roof is popped up. But I don't know. I, I've also thought about having flip-out pieces of some of the scrap aluminum that I used to build this uh, to also create that. So... Anyway, but it'll definitely be the sleeping thing next, and then maybe the pop roof. And then after that, I think the last thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to add a roof rack where I can hopefully in the future be able to hold a canoe that I want to build. So anyway, DIY projects on top of DIY projects. But uh, hopefully you found this interesting, and uh, uh, if you like the stuff I do, uh, please hit the subscribe button consider give me a thumbs up and until i see you on the next one god bless